Hi everyone, and welcome to Ontology Explained. I'm Casey Hart, a philosopher and ontologist, and today is gonna to be a little bit different than some of my other videos. You'll notice there's no slideshow or just me in the center of the screen. Instead, you're looking at my Emacs window. Today, we are gonna learn about Turtle, which is a syntax and file format for writing your ontologies. So we can put our RDF and OWL ontologies into this Turtle syntax. And today we're gonna to review how that works, what it looks like, you're seeing right now an example file that's in that format uh, and by the end of it you'll be able to write your own turtle format load them into an ontology see what they look like there's a lot more work that's going to go into like the nuances of it but this will get the basics down okay so first and even before we're looking at the details of this file let's just do a quick review and talk about what triples are so every triple in a graph, right, has the subject, predicate, object structure. That's why they're called triples. So subject, uh, predicate, or property, and then object. It's going to look like that, right? So we have those two subject and object things are connected by the edge as the property. And that just means we're going to write basically three word sentences in our turtle syntax. So we're going to say something like uh, Casey eats uh, pizza 01. That's it. We have two nodes, Casey and pizza 01, and they stand in the eats relationship between them, where presumably eats means the thing in the subject position is consuming the thing in the object position. Nothing super complicated here. Let's take a look at what the turtle syntax looks like for this earth data file. And what you can see below is we have sort of this earth data is a owl ontology that's got a triple structure to it we see some semicolons we're going to see some commas and stuff in the future too don't get too caught up by that yet we'll hit each of those in turn but the first thing you might notice is what shows up right at the very top here this big block this prefix block so in ontologies we every term is a resource and those resources are going to have a fully qualified iri or uri that's a, another video or another lesson, but in short, they're just names for the things, right? So that we're ensuring that we're talking about that same thing every time that we mention them. And so I might be saying something like HTTPS colon slash slash www.caseysdenseontology.com slash Casey heart is a person there's a triple but i'm gonna get sick of writing this https slash slash casey's dense ontology bit over and over and over again so instead of writing that whole thing i'm gonna just want to say that casey heart is a person but now how am i going to write this casey heart bit well now i just want whenever i see just the colon i want to say that's shorthand for writing this whole thing that we see above it this whole dense ontology piece and that's what that block at the very top of the page does right this block says here every time you just see the colon then assume that we're throwing in all of this information in as the start of the resource identifier that goes below it and that allows me just to be way more terse with what i write below I can just put colons all over the place. But we don't just have one prefix. We're going to have a whole bunch of prefixes, probably. Usually what happens is you have the dominant one in the ontology that you're building. And personally, I almost always just put a colon there because that's as short as I can write it. Uh, but you might, you know, if I wanted to make Casey's Dense Ontology be CDO colon or something like that, I could do it as well. In most ontologies you deal with, you're going to want to have an OWL, an RDF, in RDFS, probably a SCOS prefix, and also this XSD prefix, because that's gonna show up for our data types very frequently. The other ones are pretty optional, and technically all of them are optional. You could have no prefix block whatsoever if you just wanted to write out the fully qualified IRIs every time that you use them. That's just gonna make the syntax below really long because you're going to have very long names for every resource and we don't need to do that okay so i'm going to get rid of these two lines that's the first piece 
We start with a prefix block that's going to allow us to be more terse down below. And then everything that follows is just going to be a bunch of three word sentences. Those are our subject, property, object, triples. So here we have earth data is a owl ontology. And now already you've seen this a a few times and you might be like, what, what is going on with that? Right? A is not, it doesn't have any colon in it. It doesn't have these, you know, side carrots to say that it's a, it's a fully qualified name. What's going on? Well, there's one property that is so incredibly common. It's the RDF type property. And instead of writing RDF type over and over and over again, because that says what individual is an instance of a class, we can go ahead and just write A instead. And so this is exactly the same as saying the type of Earth data is ontology. No difference between that and this. Uh, otherwise, everything's going to feel pretty, uh, pretty normal. We don't have any other real weird properties like that that have a different sort of syntax. That one's just so common that it's worth saving the, uh, saving the screen space. The next thing to notice here is that when I put a triple before, I did subject, property, object, like this, and then I end it with a period. That terminates and that says we have a triple. And I could do an entire turtle file just like that with a bunch of subject property object sentences. But often we want to say more than one thing. In fact, almost always we want to say more than one thing about a given subject whenever it comes up. And if we want to reuse the subject, we can use this syntax where we say subject property object, and then we put another property two, and then object two, and then we could do property three, etc. So what this semicolon does for us is the semicolon says, go ahead and reuse the subject in the next triple. So if we look down below here at continent, we say continent is a instance of owl class and it is a subclass of geographic region. And it has a label of continents and it has a comment and then we give its comment, etc. So the fact that we have all of these semicolons at the end of each of these lines, it says reuse each of these, reuse the continent as the subject for all of those triples. Okay, now we have the very last variant, which is the comma. So sometimes we wanna reuse not just the subject, but also the property. So we wanna say, well, this subject has stands in the property three relation to X, and Y and Z say. So it that would give us three different triples, subject property three X, subject property three Y, subject property three Z. And we have an example of that down here on this line where again, we're reusing continent as the subject. So continent has an example instance of African continent. It's also true that continent has an example instance of North American continent. Great. Okay, those are all the variants that allows us to reuse subject and reuse subject and property, and we end up with these sorts of these sorts of representations. The other thing that we can do is put in data types. Uh, so when we have a data type property, right? Maybe we want to relate me to how tall I am, or relate Casey to how old he is, something like that. We can take an example. So let's say we want to say that Casey is, uh, uh, um, I don't know, has weight. And then we want to say 170. Now, I don't want 170 to be a string. It's not that I have the weight and that's just like a string. It's an actual number. So I want to give that number a data type. The syntax for that is like this. So we have these double up carrots. And then we say XSD decimal and XSD decimal is a particular data type that you can go find if you want to look in the XML schema. That's again why we almost always want to have XSD as one of our prefixes because you're going to be using that heavily. The prefixes, the XSDs that we use a lot are string, uh, integer, decimal, those are incredibly common. And the one other thing that shows up a fair amount after strings, we can see down here 
in my SCOS prep label assertion. So this gives me a label for the resource continent. And here we say it's continent, and then this at en gives us a language tag. So if you wanted to have a different pref label language tag for all of the possible, uh, you know, maybe we want it in French or we want it in German, et cetera, we can have some different uh, at signs that tell us what those different labels uh, are specific to in terms of their languages. All right, those are all the pieces we need here. Let's go ahead and jump over quickly and just create our own uh, our own turtle file from uh, I'm going to say scratch, but not quite from scratch, as you'll see in just a second. So here's a blank file. And the first thing that I'm doing is I'm just copying over uh, the namespaces and the prefixes from the, from the previous file. And then we can cut out some of these that we don't think we'll use. We'll use OWL, RDF, RDFS, SCOS, probably not XSL, X, uh, excuse me, SCOS XL, probably not Wikidata or XML here. And we can go ahead and say, let's make up our own, right? So this is uh, turtle tutorial.com slash. And now we're going to represent something. Let's just say that we want to represent a couple of sports, all right? So we have sport, which is a class. And then let's create some. Uh, individuals that are instances of that sport. So again, notice I say sport a owl class, that's a triple. I throw a semicolon in here and then have a period. I don't need the semicolon. If this is all I'm going to do, I could just end it like this. The reason I tend to throw a semicolon in at the end is because I might go back later and want to add some more triples to it like this, where I can say, okay, let's give a comment to sport and say, this is the class of all uh, uh, athletic competitions, or I can just use a cop out and say, this is the class of all sports and throw in a, a, a semicolon again there. That gives me an option to say some more stuff about. And then we can name a particular sport. So let's say archery and archery is an instance. So it's an owl named individual. I don't need to assert this, but I can. And this owl named individual is also an instance of sport. And to the person who is paying attention, there's there's hopefully one of you out there who is paying attention to the last slide. You might say, oh, for the last example, well, we use the same property twice here. Instead of saying it's archery is a named individual and archery is a sport, I can just reuse the A and put sport up here. And that tells me that archery is both a named individual and a sport. And then we can create a few others, right? Maybe we wanna create uh, a subclass of sport like team sports. And now we can make a couple of team sports. So we can say that basketball is a team sport. I'm going to change this to team from team sports to team sport. It's good practice to make all of our class names singular here. So basketball is a team sport and football, American, a team sport. And we can have uh, uh, soccer, a team sport. Notice I forgot my semicolon there. That's a problem that won't compile correctly. Now we've got a bunch of things that are thrown out. We've got some semicolons, we've got some commas. We could throw some more comments on these things if we wanted to, right? So let's just put one more piece in here just to have a different type of assertion. Uh, uh, let's have the number of players on a team uh, who start, something like that. We can say in basketball, you have five players who start on the court at a given time for each team. And uh, in football, we have 11 players that are going to start on the field at a time. And that's enough here. Now let's go ahead and take this and just to show how it works. 
and go load it into something to visualize and look at what our ontology is. And here is a, uh, a web app that I've found useful to get a couple of quick visualizations on. Uh, I'll share the URL down in the description below so you can take a look for it there. But load exactly what we had on our other file. We can highlight all of these and we can say, look at that, we've got ourselves a knowledge graph. So this proves that you know here's our turtle syntax and it's able to be compiled. Right? You could also load this up and take a look at it in Protege or Pool Party or Top Braid or sort of pick whatever your preferred editor is. Another really nice way to learn how to make turtle files is to load up Protege or your preferred you know, WYSIWYG editor, make an ontology within that, and then save it to a turtle format. And then you can go over and look at what that turtle syntax looks like. And that's a good way to learn how to create it for yourself. Because while I've hit some of the basics here, there are some more nuances, like how do you create owl restrictions uh, or how are we going to deal with blank nodes, those sorts of things, which are great. And we'll hit those at another point in time. But a really, really user-friendly way to do that is to take a already built tool for creating those and then see what the output is. And then you can sort of reverse engineer how you can create that yourself in just a text editor format. But again, if we zoom into this, we can see that soccer and football and basketball are all instances of team sport. And team sport is a subclass of sport. And we've got our connections to how many starting players we have. We've got our comments. All of those things can show up here. Uh, and then if we want later, you could even use this interface to go back and write some Sparkle queries against your data. But Sparkle queries is time for another video and another topic. I think I've gone on long enough here. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you picked up what Turtle is and how you can write your own sentences in Turtle. And now you can be a little more fluent in going and reading somebody else's ontologies or building your own. Have a great day.